Okay, good to go. All right, uh, so we'd like to call the uh, facilities committee meeting of the Keystone Board of Directors, Keystone Central Board of Directors, the Tuesday, February 27th meeting, I should say, to order. Um, and I guess the first item on the agenda here is um, the C uh, middle school tennis court DCNR grant. I think Wes Faringer was supposed to be here today to do a, a presentation on the DCNR grants and what's involved with that and how to apply and what it what what you can use them for and so on. However, uh, he has not he's not able to be here today. He let us know, I guess, yesterday that he was not able to attend. But we do have a couple of gentlemen here uh, who I think are interested in that. Um, some related to the DCNR grant, am I correct? Correct. Okay. So if you two would like to share what, and let us know who you are, and then let us know what, uh, what your interest is. Okay. My name is Tony Walker. I am the... Uh... Council President of the uh, Mill Hall Borough. Tony, you should be able to pull the microphone back yeah. to you. You have about okay. three more foot you can pull back. That's good. How's that? Can everybody hear? That's perfect. Okay. Uh, our interest would be uh, to that, since it's in the borough, uh, to possibly partner with the, the school district. And also, there is a couple other items there that you want to discuss, which would be the baseball field and the other uh, courts by the pool is that something that they were uh, looking at as well well that was that was the main item on the agenda was the were the tennis courts um but uh you know i because we really didn't have the baseball field as a as an okay. item to discuss but all right uh, as far as the tennis courts uh the school district what would they actually need from the borough would be the main question there as far as the grant goes, as yes, as, I I don't know enough about it, Rob. I maybe think Joni and I can kind of speak to that. Uh, we we did meet with uh, Wes. Uh, I, I want to say spot four or six weeks ago in that time frame. Joni and I had a conference call with him. One of the pieces that be, became difficult for the school district was the grant really needs to be coming from the borough. The school districts don't qualify under the grant, un, other than one section of it, which was, wasn't was a very high dollar amount, uh, relatively speaking. It was a, I wanna say that the school districts only re, could get up to $75,000 if we applied directly. What they, what Wes had suggested, and I don't wanna speak for him because he was gonna be here today, but what he had suggested is that if we wanna do a project such as something with a DCNR grant that, we partner with the uh, municipality or the township or what have you to to try and do that. But the townships and municipalities can apply directly to them. And I think that's similar to what you guys did with the pool. Yes. I think Dr. Martin helped you with some of that mm -hmm. to get you through those pieces of it. Uh, that's kind of how he suggested to uh, both Joni and I that we would proceed if we had a project that we could do something like that with. Uh, so that that's kind of where we left it with Wes and that he was going to kind of come back to us, but it really, the projects need to come from the, from the boroughs, the township and not the school district. Uh, what we are looking for and Elizabeth has tried to, to, uh, to kind of, I, I don't want to say maybe spearheaded or, or push it along was how we could you know possibly get something done with those tennis courts. They're really used for more of a public type thing over there. We don't use them for a lot of stuff with, within the district. We use, mm -hmm. that's mostly used by the public. So how could we partner with DCNR and the township, uh, or I'm sorry, the borough to make those tennis courts work? So those, that's kind of where we were when uh, we got to this point that, and I think that kind of sums it up. You know, we're, we're very early on in it. Uh, obviously there's, there's deadlines as far as how you make the submissions and how you, you do all that stuff. Uh, so that's kind of where it was left and, you know, Wes was going to fill us in a little more today. 
All right, so um, would it be a better idea then to wait to see what he had to say or, you know, before we go any farther uh, with the borough? Well, maybe uh, it would be a good idea for you guys as, as the en entity of the borough to maybe have Wes talk to you since you have to take the lead on, on a grant like this, you know, and if we wanted to get involved with the borough as, mm -hmm. as part of that, um, that would sound to me it would make more sense to have okay. since you are the ones that would have to take the okay we can uh talk to him uh we're, we've been uh in constant contact with him because of the grant with the swimming pool so we're uh getting mm -hmm. ready to do some stuff uh you know work there hopefully is going to begin this summer or soon uh we can have the secretary reach out to him uh do you let, let me ask you this one uh, has there been any preliminary uh, figures on what a total cost would be and what they were really looking for over there for for the, for tennis, the tennis courts? There hasn't no. been a no a formal proposal done. I do have some people looking at it at this point to see what it's going to take because of the the different cracking and different things we have over there. Okay. Uh, I don't have that yet. I'm I, I'm due to have it uh, within the next couple of weeks uh that piece of it but that's going to be the piece for just the tennis courts one of the very first parts of that grant is we have to we'd have to address the ada parking and uh access to it uh which is going to add cost to the project uh off the top of my head i, I i'd just be grabbing at a figure at that because i don't know how many spaces are going to require us to have outside and what that parking is going to look like uh that that would be a great project uh with the borough, if we could make it happen, uh, it's a it is a, a matching grant, so there's yeah. there is some funds mm -hmm. that are going to have to uh, to become uh, somewhere. The funds have to come. The tennis courts aren't something that we really need for an educational purpose. Uh, I have about sixty two million dollars of stuff on my ten year plan that has a higher priority than some of uh, tennis courts and some of those things. You know, heat heat and air conditioning. Uh, you know, stuff inside the buildings is, is somewhat of a higher priority. So where we dealt, where, where we would put some of those funds, uh, I, I don't know how that whole piece of the match would be. I'm not sure if the borough is interested in the match part of it, or if it's going to be the borough is going to rely on the school district for the match. Uh, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. Uh, Dr. Redmond's just coming on board, so he's mm -hmm. kind of just getting up to speed with some of this. And you know, we've had some of these conversations in the past. Uh, where he's he's really just coming up to speed with my ten-year plan, or when I say mine, the district's ten-year plan, but the one I'm kind of responsible for. So we're trying to get through all those pieces. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, there's grant deadlines and different things, but DCNR funds these things every year. Uh, you know, if we're not ready for it this year, it may be next year we look at it. Uh, there, there's a lot of different pieces moving to it, I guess. Okay, so uh, what the what we'll do as far as the borough end, we'll uh, touch base with Wes and see if he can come in and, and uh, talk to us and see what we need to do to uh, make this thing uh, happen. We can't promise anything. I, I don't know where we would be with that, but that would be a council decision uh, moving forward. And I think we're in the same boat as far as it would all hinge on what you would get out of the grant, what we, what the, the match on our end of it would be, mm -hmm. because like Rob said, um, there are a lot of things, uh, two pages worth of things in buildings that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, and we, as you know, as <laughs> the borough and everybody, there's, yeah. So, so many dollars to go around. And so mm -hmm. we have to prioritize it. So I don't know, depending upon what, you know, what our match would be um, or what our portion of it would have to be, you know, that would certainly determine whether we would want to get on board with it or not. So. All right. Well, like I said, we'll, we'll reach out to uh, Wes and uh, have him come in to, you know, the borough or something and, uh, see what we can do, and we'll address uh, some of the issues that you guys would have. Uh, the uh, match would be probably one of the biggest ones. So, until right. uh, we have some more on that, then we'll uh, come back and 
uh, we'll see where we need to go. Okay. And I, I'd be, oh, I'm sorry, I'd be more than more than happy to, to sit in on those meetings with when you meet with Wes, because mm -hmm. if we're talking about our facility or whatever, uh, you know, I provide whatever information we can to try and you know help through that. So uh, Wanda work uh, has my schedule all the time and uh, she can, as long as you, you know, feed it to her, I can try yeah. and, uh, you know, at least yep. attend the meeting with you and you know, listen to Wes's stuff and all that. So, okay. well, whenever we get a chance to sit down and he, you know, we can nail him down because he's uh, obviously a pretty busy guy. Yeah. So we'll uh, be in contact and more than happy to have you set in on a meeting. Yeah, and I think, I think I, I think you have my cell phone number. Yes, I, I do. So you can, you know, either work through Wanda or call, just text, send me a text. Hey, this one is happening. I have hers too. So, yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll try and work, try and help you however we can and, you know, you know, get it, get it going along. Okay. No. Thank you for coming. Um, as your representative in Mill Hall, I, I just wanted to backtrack a little bit and not to, confuse the information. Um, and maybe it's because the cracks have gotten larger, but the school district, the physical education classes, those kids are out there every day almost on the courts. Um, not as much this year, maybe because the cracks are so big and the color guard uses it for practice, although they practice in other areas. So the district students do use it. And as far as the match goes, now I'm jumping ahead here and I'm sorry, but just to give a different optimistic viewpoint. <laughs> um, we had a couple of emails from local citizens who love using the court after school, pickleball. Um, the pickleball group used to be there, but uh, we didn't partner with the pickleball people and they moved to Lock Haven and they were able to get extraordinary amount of money in a short period of time to have the courts in Lock Haven rebuilt. And one of the interested parties from the citizens email was that they're willing to help if this district or the partners so choose to help find some matching funds, if we ever get to that point. So um, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, we wish you the best. We want to do what's right for the kids and for the district and also for the community. I mean, it's a huge asset in the, in the community and people drive there to even use the courts after school, not just the neighborhood people, all age groups. So it seems like it's used quite a bit. Um, whether or not this ends up being a good fit for the district in the short and long term, uh, hopefully we can find that answer soon. And um, we look forward to the next update. And if, since I'm your representative in Mill Hall, if you feel comfortable um, and if the board committee feels comfortable, um, I'd like to come to those meetings also since I'm fairly familiar with the program and Wes. Sure. Like I said, whenever we uh, get all the contacts made and we can nail somebody down to a date that uh, we'll be reaching out uh, to the school district to uh, make sure everybody's involved. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Anything else for us? Can you get the other gentleman's name just for a uh, minute? Hi, I'm Derek Berry, uh, Moho Councilman and head of the Park and Rec Committee. Okay, thank you. No, I, I, that should do it unless you guys have anything I'll see if you want to go. I'm, I'm good if you guys are good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for being Thank here. You. Sorry for making you wait so long. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. You forget where I used to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Anything else on item one? I just had a curiosity. It was just wondering. Um, I thought the Redmond, did you have a chance to talk to? Dave Romanishian about exactly how much that they, they, he feels that they use those courts. Uh, no, but I've just reached out to him again to uh, try to get something more specific. On it. And I'll send the committee that uh, response from Mr. Romanishian. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on that topic? All right. If not, moving on to the uh, there be curtain asbestos removal, and maybe Rob, you can just give us a whole update on where we are with um, the whole project. Okay, uh, I'll I'll start with the the asbestos removal piece of it because there's talk within the committee, uh, this committee of 
applying for the grant to try and help offset some of that cost. Um, the timing for that isn't going to work out real great because we need to take the asbestos out this summer uh, because of the small window we have next summer. Originally, I thought the dollar amount for the asbestos removal was considerably higher, uh, although it's any, any dollar amount that we could get grant funded, it, it would be great. But uh, th this dollar amount we're talking about for the asbestos removal is just uh, just shy of 75,000 uh, of floor tile that's in there that would be grant eligible. Uh, my recommendation would be that we don't use the grant for that because the timing is not gonna work out. We would. We need to take that tile out in June of this year so that we can tear the building down in uh, July of the following year. Uh, we, it, it just, the timing, if we have to wait until August to tear the building down because we have to abate it uh, next summer, we're not gonna get the parking lots built, all that kind of stuff, which would actually could push the start of uh, the school year, a, a full year out. The $75,000 that we, we're going to spend it's it is covered in the project cost already if we could recover it and and get it it would be great i just don't think at this point that uh waiting is going to help us at all i think that it, it's just going to delay the project uh and it's it's just not worth doing uh, i'm open you know for whatever questions the committee has on it but it, it's not a in the grand scheme of things it's not a great big dollar amount we have a lot of other things that we can apply for this. Uh, it's Act 34 money. Is that what? I, sure. I, I think it's Act 34 money that is uh, up to $5 million of Act 34 money is going to become available. And it comes March, I believe it's March 1st to June 30, June 30th for the, the window to put the stuff in. Uh, my recommendation would be that we look more towards the heating and air conditioning in this building uh, for that grant. I, I don't feel confident we would get it to, to take the asbestos out up, up there if we apply for it for other, we apply other things within other spaces within the district. So, you know, what, what's the committee's thought, I guess? Uh, any? Well, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it, I, we certainly want to, don't want to delay that whole project. And we're going to need to do to slow that down. And the money has been, allocated in on a project for it it's not like we're having to find money elsewhere to take care of that we knew we were going to have to probably do that so uh, i'd say keep the grant focused on our application for the hvac here it just makes more sense and you're right you know, seventy-five thousand sounds like a lot of money but in the whole scheme of things in the whole project, it's really not that much. So I don't know what, what everybody else thinks, but that's where I-, I When we, we remove the flooring, what will we do then? Just buff the concrete or you don't know? Well, I'm working with the contractor on that piece of it now. Uh, because of trying to, uh, trying to keep the cost as, as minimal as possible, uh, the glue has, the glue ha is also what we call hot. It has asbestos containing material in it. Uh, what, what the contractor has suggested to me, and I haven't got it in, haven't got it completely confirmed yet, but they would come in and flash patch what the, over top of uh, what, whatever is left on the floor, because we can't come in and grind that unless they take it. They have to come in and shot blast it so that we could come in and grind it. But if they come in and do a flash, pa flash patch on it, It'll look like uh, the floor did it, uh, Rob Elementary gym for about six months till we were able to get in there and uh, uh, get that floor ground and, and taken care of. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's for, you know, it's one school year that they'll have to deal with it. We'll be able to, they'll flash patch it. We may come over and put some sealer on top of it, some wax on top of it, enough that we can get by for the year and, uh, and then take it out. But I don't want to get the, the cost of the asbestos abatement up so high that uh, you know it just it becomes you know a, an added change or, or change order to the job or anything. So I think we have some stuff covered that we can make it taller so they can tolerate it for safe. a year and also safe. Just safe. once they flash patch it, oh, yeah, it'll safe. be.
So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do you think there's any more asbestos in the building that we're going to? We talked that about that hasn't been already in the project. Yeah, good, good question. I'm a, uh, I mean, we know yeah. they use asbestos for everything. Wow, it's what? like caulk and <laughs> we're gonna. <laughs> We're trying to verify right now, but I'm I'm 99% sure that underneath all the casework, uh, we're going to find some some stuff about two foot wide by the length of the classroom. So you know each classroom may have you know, 40 40 square feet, 50 square feet of of tile that's underneath uh, along the windows and underneath the heaters. I, we, we're going to take covers off the heaters, try and uh, verify what's underneath there, and then there's some metal casework. We believe it's under there. We talked about it in the <laughs> this morning uh, because it's not covered in any of that. So we may, the following summer, we still may have to deal with uh, underneath the casework. But sure. as far as uh, piping, there's not a lot of overhead piping in that building. Uh, most of it's in the slab. So there's not a good, it's not gonna, yeah, we're not going to have asbestos wrap uh, <clears throat> corners and all that stuff that we typically see. So I don't have a crystal ball or whatever no, you see behind walls, but I I, it's I think we know yeah. just under the casework is where it's anticipated. Right, right. No, you're doing the right thing. Appreciate uh, it. We know some under some carpet too, but I think we have those areas already identified. Yeah, they use it for everything. They do. Everything, but it's, it's a great insulator. It does everything. <laughs> it lasts forever almost. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Anything else on the budget? Well, I guess. Yeah, we'll start into some of the a couple of things. Uh, first, first piece up there, uh, when they excavated uh, the old sewer plant building, there is a concrete. Uh, it's basically a sediment. I'll call it a sediment uh, pond or sediment uh, filter. It's it's about uh, 30, 30 feet across, fifty feet long, about six feet high. And it, it's filled with sand and filled with, uh, then they put dirt over top of the sand. It's basically what the water, the effluent used to come into and filter down through and go, then be piped out of the bottom of this thing. Uh, they built a playground over top of this um, back probably in the uh, early 70s. And uh, we didn't know it was underneath there. So the contractors asked for a, a not to exceed change order on that one for 22,000 to remove it. Uh, so you'll see that um, for approval at the next board meeting, but I'd like to, uh, if possible, get some kind of a, I need to be able to tell the contractor to, you know, they're gonna, we're gonna take it out or we're not, because uh, it'll hold up the project if we wait for what, three weeks to, to do that approval. So I'm, I'm trying to, I told him I'd try and get some kind of answer. It's in the footprint of the building, it has to go. We don't have a choice in it. Uh, the only thing I can do is try and, uh, mitigate the cost to try and keep it, you know, under, we know it's not to exceed 22,000. I'll do my best to keep it well under that. Uh, so that's the first item up there that was unforeseen. The second item that's unforeseen is we found a, underneath the sewer building, there was also a, a tank, uh, we'll call it, it was a, it's approximately four foot around by about 10 to 12 feet tall. It had been filled up with, uh, with, bunches of old stuff over the years and then they they put stone on the top of it uh, they also found an oil residue in it we believe to be an oil residue uh, when I was notified of it yesterday morning I I sent a text to uh, Dr. Edmund right away and I went about uh, cleaning it up and remedi remediating it before the rain comes tonight uh, within about three hours we had it uh, about 20 tons of uh, dirt that had the oil residue in the in the dumpster it was lined and we had testing being sent out to find out what the residue and everything is. Uh, there is a change order coming for that. I, I went ahead and uh, got that ball rolling. Uh, I didn't want to be dealing with, you know, hundreds of tons of dirt. We, we got it contained to, you know, a very small area. Uh, we did pre-testing of the of the material that was in there. I, I believe it's motor oil that it was dumped in there uh, because in the seventies, that was common practice, you know, we, it ground. was just dumped. Yeah. So I did the best I could to uh, just handle it 
as quickly as possible so we didn't have additional contamination. Uh, we dug it out. They did the post testing uh, of, the, of the surfaces uh, around the, the hole. Everything came back good. Uh, and we have the material in, a, in the dumpster lined and covered. We're gonna get the test results back uh, and they'll tell us how we have to deal with it. It may be nothing. It may not be high enough content that we have to deal with. Uh, my notice tells me that it was probably high enough that they're going to make us treat it as uh, some kind of a, a landfill. Uh, so the contractors were very happy. Uh, it was all handled. They said, you know, they said usually it takes three days to, to even get somebody to, to talk about it. We had, I had guys there uh, from Center County. It, that's Center County. And the, there's a cleanup company, uh, Eagle Tire Come Downs. It did the cleanup. That's going to be, be, uh, Bill directly to us, other than the time for the excavator, which was on site from uh, uh, Feaster, which I signed a change order for, I think it's about five hours of time. Dr. Redmond and I talked about that a little bit. You know, I don't have those exact numbers. It's gonna be a couple thousand dollars for their, their time to excavate it, but I didn't wanna pay Eagle to bring an excavator in when I have one sitting there. But I did, uh, I did deal directly with Eagle on the, uh, the cleanup piece and, uh, we'll find that dollar amount out once the uh the test results come back and they tell us what it is exactly how quickly do we get to it? two weeks they say it takes two weeks to get that stuff so <laughs> two weeks uh, yeah and it may be something we can just take down to, to wayne you know the 20 tons take down to land, wayne township landfill uh i, I don't know where who, i don't know who accepts soil with oil in it but it's nothing different than if you have a tractor trailer wreck on the interstate they come in they dig that soil out put it in the dumpster and take it away uh, it's just unfortunate that, you know, we found it and we had to deal with it. I, I don't know if fortunate. Yeah, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. We found it and uh, we dealt with it swiftly and uh, it's taken care of and uh, you know, we'll, we'll move forward from it. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, just a quick question. I mean, we, we all know this. When you, when you redo an old previous building, especially in that age time period, there's always going to be convention, I mean, contemporary environmental things that we don't do today that was standard practice back then. Okay, we all know that. I thought we did an environmental assessment on this site because I had brought up some issues and I guess they were gonna do some soil tests, some bore tests and- They, they, they did do some of that stuff because uh, they have the pond and all that stuff and everything. They didn't find any of this stuff. I mean, and they wouldn't have found I think the reason they found this piece of it is because it was contained inside this this metal metal vault that was in a shed that was buried with chairs over top of it from the last you know twenty years. Okay. Uh, it, no, I'm not it, blaming it, anyone. I'm not blaming anyone. It's just that you know we we. I, I don't I don't foresee any more major hiccups. Knock on wood. I was away last week, and that you know, of course that's going to happen. I'm away, but uh, they're they have the retention pond in that piece of its. Uh, 95 percent complete they're going to start stripping off the asphalt at this point uh off the old uh, bus turnaround area i don't foresee us having any uh, anything major underneath there because they did do some you know bores in some different areas um i, I don't i don't foresee any additional of course, you environmental do the best stuff but do the best we're doing you know we did <clears throat> that one kind of just it surprised me, but then as, as I thought about it, you know, I think that that sewer plant was decommissioned in 1970, early, whenever the dam was built in 69, I think we started sending our sewage up to the, uh, to the sewer plant in Blanchard. And Clean so water. somewhere in that mid, middle of the 70s, we decommissioned that thing and it was just a convenient hole that somebody decided that's where motor oil should go. And that's really what it seems like. So, you know, Back then, it was a standard practice. You know, yeah. the, the townships yep. were dumping it on the on the berms and everything else. So it keeps the weeds down. It does, but <laughs> you know, I'm, we just have to handle things differently. And you know, we we did, and you know, we'll we'll address any any environmental issues that come up. We'll address okay. them on a a case by case basis, and, and that goes for not just that building, any of the buildings. You know, we're always trying to to stay ahead of that and uh, you know, make sure that we're doing the correct thing with that. Well, it's good to get it out of the soil, out of the groundwater. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds like you did exactly what you needed to do. So 
uh, I guess with that being said, we'll have, we're looking at uh, two potential change orders. Uh, the one is gonna be for the, for the 22,000 to remove the, uh, that storage tank that they, they dug up or the storage, I'll call it a vault basically. It's the, the drain field. And I'd like to be able to do, and I don't know how Dr. Redman feels or whatever, but I'd like to be able to, to get that one moved along because they, they'd like to start build, putting footers in by March 8th. And I think if we look at our calendar, uh, that's we won't even have board approval until 14th. So can we, we move that one forward or that actually comes to the next item on our agenda is what change orders can I make in the field versus having to wait for full board approval? Because there's a the not to exceed of about twenty two thousand on this, then right. the, what we're proposing in the next uh, item is something at that level would have to come to this subcommittee. For unfortunately, that has to go through all of the steps uh, to the board, I think. So then, unless we call a special meeting, we'll just have to just go to the board. Just yeah, take this to the to the board meeting on the seventh for review and the fourteenth. President Bush, do you feel that if if a change or I mean I know we're, I'm kind of jumping here, but if a change order, I mean, seeing if the other board members that they have to have a special meeting just to approve something for him, I mean that shouldn't be a problem, right? I mean we can. I think what we need to do is currently anything up till now take to the full board to approve. I think what we can do then is at their board meeting maybe come up with a dollar amount that Rob has blanket approval to do change orders up to a certain amount. But we have to do this one now because we haven't taken that additional step. Right. What we can do at our next meeting, come up with a step that says Rob will have approval, we'll say, we'll say 25,000, whatever we decide. Whatever. Well, yeah, Anything that's... under 25,000, he can go ahead and do, and then notify the board afterwards. That's yeah. a perfect segue into number three, because um, that's exactly what that deals with. Exactly what you're saying. Uh, so I don't know I, whether we want to, I, we probably, since we're on change order, we might as well talk about that right now. Yeah. As far as the those ceilings, as far as uh, what Rob can approve up to and the committee and so sure. on. So, so Joni and I were talking about this uh, along with Rob about what would be an appropriate amount because you know these things happen, right? Change orders happen as, uh, with, with these construction projects. There should be some level of approval that Rob can just take care of in the field if it's necessary. He and I, of course, are in constant communication. And then there's another level that should be a combination of me and the and the facilities committee. And then above that dollar figure, kind of like you're saying, it should go to the full board. Uh, we talked to uh, the architect from Crabtree and, and asked him for some recommendations. And oddly enough, Joni and I had come up with some ballpark numbers and they're exactly the same as the ones that Jeff, the architect, came up with. So in the attachment that's in our mm -hmm. on our agenda there, the levels are 15,000 and, and below. Rob would be able to approve in the field if it's a change order that, that's necessary. Uh, 30,000 and down would, would down to 15 would come to the facilities committee uh, and we would talk about that. And then anything above that would go to the full board. So what we'd like is some discussion here and if the, the committee approves and we take it to the full board uh, just like you're saying but to have the full board take a look at that and hopefully we can see him move forward so then in this case the the one the twenty two thousand dollar change order would fall under the second category there. right <clears throat> So it would come to us and then we should probably decide if it's something that's an emergent uh, issue that needs to be taken taken care of in the next week or two before a facilities committee, then that would be up to me to make that decision. And if we can wait until a facilities committee, we would. I mean, oh, um, uh, this is definitely needed. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the only thing I'm, I have just a couple of I don't want to say concerns, but I'm just going to highlight these. Um, number one, I just want to make sure that, you know, I wouldn't want this pressure put on any staff member. Like all of a sudden Rob is out there. He's got to make a decision right here and now. And then it all of a sudden, you know, Rob's head is on the chopping block because Rob did that. So I, I know you folks are going to have some sort of coverage for each other. So that mm -hmm. won't happen. Um, so that was my major thing is just to make sure that 
no one gets pinpointed with if something. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's, I just wanted to vocalize it. Um, the other one is, <clears throat> I'm not saying this would happen today, but um, sometimes some groups would purposely subdivide things up. So you have multiple small amounts versus lumping it all together. So that way you can just go ahead with the project. I'm not saying this group would do that. I'm just saying that is not uncommon. So um, just to, to make sure that however you folks word it, you're comfortable with it. It's, it's emergency decision, this 15,000 or whatever it is. I mean, it's gotta be done right here, right now, and not something that's just, okay, well, simply we can just go ahead, even though we don't need it six months from now. Um, you know, like this would be for on this job site. This is a decision that has to be made right now or within you know four or five days or before our next meeting. And then just to keep the everyone happy and transparency, and I'm sure this, I'm just vocalizing it, that all change orders, no matter what they are, that, you know, a summary, however you feel, you know, for the, the agenda, um, a summary is there. So everyone knows what the change order was and where the money went to. Um, but I feel that this is very important because, you know, if you have to make a decision, you need an answer within a day or a week or sometime before the next approval, you need that flexibility. And I support that flexibility. Um, so that was just my two cents. Uh, I, and I, I agree with what you're saying. I, and I try very hard to make sure that never, it never is anything what I, I call that piecemealing, basically what you just said. And I, I try very hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I'm not, I don't want change orders. I don't, I, I don't want to have them up there. Uh, but in a project of this size, you know, it's a, they build this into the price. It's a necessary evil. Uh, it, it does happen. Uh, but I, I, I had asked for this letter uh, under Dr. Martin and then uh, Dr. Redmond jumped on it right away mm -hmm. and uh, met with the architect, Joni. And uh, I sat in a little bit on it, uh, but I'd asked for it right away because, you know, it's the pressure that is put on me and I do have to make those decisions and I don't want this job to be an delayed and the kids to have to be in that building another year. I want this building mm -hmm. to be open in you know, September of 25. So trying to work through, I am trying to just work through those pieces of it. Uh, I do feel that this, this one for the, not to exceed 22,000, I need to give those guys an approval on that or, or something uh, very soon, because that's going to hold up putting footers in. They want to start laying block up, up there yeah. by, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they put in footers on the 11th, uh, shortly after that. So, so Butch, that really is going to come down to how you want to handle it. I, I don't see any way that we can not remove it. We have to remove it. Uh, it, it. It's it's in the way of the building. You know, I asked. I already asked the engineers. Can we can we build over top of it? You know, what what other options do we have? Can we? And they said that the best solution for this is to to get it to come out. So, well, I you know I don't I don't see why we would want to delay. You know, something like this. It's it's a it's a necessary thing you know we got to do it and like you said that it's the money's built into it the change orders into your project and as far as you know i i don't think that rob is going to be making any kind of um, reckless decisions when it comes to change orders and regardless he's still going to be running it by dr redmond anyway so the two of them have mm -hmm. to be on the same page. So I don't see that that these, you know, they're going to be making numerous change orders, you know, that are just on just willy nilly. So you know, I think in this scenario, we know it's an emergency change order that has to be done where the project will right. be delayed. So I think we'd be fine if we we as a facility committee to say, I know we can't really approve anything. To tell you to go ahead and do it and then because it's an emergency but then have you contact or send an email someone send an email out to the rest of the board explaining this emergency would have delayed the entire project this is why it had to take place between now and the 14th to keep the project moving forward and go ahead with it yeah and also like that on the agenda too so 
everyone is a not just the board members. Well, can, any well the change order will be on any the change order will be on right, the agenda the, the next right. agenda. Okay, you're right. But with us as a board on the 14th approving this scenario where they can make changes without coming to the board up to mm -hmm. the dollar amount. Yeah. We can put that on the agenda. And then the following month, if something comes up between March and April, those change orders will be on the agenda, right. but they've already been approved. That sounds but, like a great plan. Yeah, I think we, we have to put them on the agenda to do it, but we, I think we give them permission to go ahead and grant the contractor permission to go ahead and start it and then have it approved afterwards. Yeah, and that's how I word it to the contractor. I'll, and I'll talk with uh, both Joni and Dr. Redmond on this. We'll, we'll craft an email to them basically saying that we'll have full approval from the full board on such and such a date. But at this point, I'm giving you a verbal consent to go ahead and, and, and start the demolition process of that tank. Yeah, basically, once I give them that notice to proceed, the district's on the hook for it. So then it's kind of between me and the myself and the board right. at that point because i i'll put the district on the hook for that piece of it but as long as i have uh his blessing you know the consent of the you know, the board presidents pull the board and all that well, and i then, can't really see that there would be any of the other board members that would would have a problem with that yeah. with an objection i mean they certainly don't want to delay the project and uh, you know i just i can't speak for them certainly but i right. can't yeah. believe that they're that they would be opposed to that. Yeah, I just think after the fact, send an email out saying right. this is what, because of this situation, this is what was approved. So everyone's aware of it. And then the next meeting, we'll have it on the agenda and formally vote on it then. But yeah, I don't see any problem doing it. I just, I don't think that the, that any of the board members really want to be having a bunch of special meetings all the time for, for some of this. I mean, if it's a, a dire emergency or whatever, we'll do that. But uh, I mean, we could, we could call a special meeting for this and all that. But I don't think we any of us want to nickel and dime this whole project. Right. But we'll be here every day. I mean, that's what we have our trust in you for, and Dr. Redmond. That's so you guys get paid the big bucks to make the decision and do it. Exactly. We yeah. we lean on Joni Joni too for this because she has to pay for <laughs> she it. She just has to write the check. Out. That's right. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I get a um, an email out to the entire board, uh, yeah. letting the board know our plan. I think it's great. Now, if the facility committee approves it, then just then put that in the email as approved by the facilities committee. Recommend it. Oh. Right. Yeah. Super. Okay. Anything else on it would be curtain front? Yeah, I, I will say that uh, things are moving along well up there. Uh, I think you, you'll want to, you'll be making a report to the board, but everything's moving along. Retention pond is 95% complete. Uh, they're hoping to put footers in on, I believe they said 311. Uh, I can't remember exactly. So, you know, we're going to start, well, the Masons are coming in March to start putting blocks up. So, uh, moving along very well. Are they, if you don't mind me asking, are they going to be still, they were talk about it. Um, to have photographs and then updated on the website or a live cam or something, or did we ever proceed? We, we issued a purchase order to our security company, DES Systems. Uh, they're going to place a time lapse, time lapse <clears throat> camera up there uh, on the building. At the end of the project, they'll, they'll compile that into a time lapse uh, photography type thing. Uh, Dr. Redmond and I haven't talked exactly okay. from. Okay uh day to day as far as on the website as far as how we're going to update that that might be something we talk with brett more uh i'm there every day taking pictures and doing some of that stuff uh but why don't we have that e well it's just an email we don't have what do we have for anything for liberty curtain we have that liberty curtain project don't we there's something on the website i thought for liberty curtain project there's a possibility totally. we can we can start to put some of those okay. pictures of it's progress out that would be lovely because all the work you did on the. Yeah, we just got that. Oh, where's the tennis court? No, attendance. Attendance.
<laughs> attendance <laughs> court. Attendance court. Well, the only reason why I bring that up was for, for two things. One, there was so much work done in the last four years on the high school, the Central Mountain School, all the floors you did, all the windows, all the da da da. And even though we never posted before and after pictures, not even, you know, so you don't, it's people out there don't understand the huge, some of the rooms, the huge transformations that took place. And this is a great opportunity, you know, so anyway, right, I'm Pat, done. Patty does uh, post some of the, are you doing the Facebook updates? Uh, some of those I, pictures, I'm not I even sure. Any pictures. I know, but who, somebody does our I Facebook know. stuff. Uh, so maybe that's another avenue where we can put some Could of that and some of that like, stuff that you're talking about. Yeah, a floors. lot of that did get did go out over Facebook on a you know like a, a couple of days um, blip or whatever you want to call it. Okay, I missed so it. Sorry. Some of that stuff is out there, but I, I, I agree. We don't. It, it's you know I see it all the time, and we don't always get it. Do a great job of pushing out all the great things that we are doing. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the last item here, the uh, ten-year plan. I know that um, the committee members are quite familiar, as most of us are, with with what's on the ten-year plan that we've had been working. It's a it's a working document, and it's certainly, I should say, a living document because we we make changes at it on it at any point. But Dr. Redmond's kind of just get familiarized with it. I know he has really had a lot of time to really sit down and digest everything on there. Um, but I'm not sure, I guess we want to look at what, what we, we've been doing in there and what still needs to be done. And I'm not sure you know no. what what Dr. Redman what you were looking for is that as far as that plan is concerned I know we we have things well prioritized and I know that the with Dr. Martin had met a couple different times over the last year year and a half or two with the men team primarily the building principals and they prioritized their needs for what they saw as the greatest needs down to the, the lesser ones. And that's where we came up with this document. So I know some of the things on there we have are in progress. Some of them are completed. And so I don't know that we have a lot of dollars to start tackling some other things in here. But so I don't know where what we want to do as far as you want to speak to it. Yeah, yeah. So what uh, Rob and I were just talking <coughs> about this before the meeting, uh, and what we would like is some time to look through that and, and go kind of line by line, and then some spend some time with administrators just as a check in. We don't want to redo the work that's already been done that you mentioned, uh, but just to check in to see if there's there's any changes. And then come back to the committee, and then we can, uh, you know, after spending some time with Joni and looking at funding streams and looking if there's some shifting around in terms of timeline that we need to do because we have a different funding picture now than we did a year ago. Uh, and so we're just looking for some time to uh, to rework this a little bit um, and with Joni to bring back uh, any changes that we think we would recommend to the committee. Well, it seems. It seems to make sense to me. I mean, it's just to get it updated, nothing else. See where we are with it. Um, I know what. I know we tried. I know originally we were saying we wanted to get the existing things that were in progress done before we started to tackle anything new, especially with the Liberty Curtain project for one, um, because I don't know that we have tons of revenue <laughs> to start tackling new things anyway. So, but I think I think it's a, a, a smart idea to go back down and back and review it and sit down with the, the building administrators. And, and so it's kind of a, uh, yeah, that's that's you, know, you guys, both of you guys, kind of sum that up. Uh, 
that's exactly what Dr. Redman and I talked about prior to, to today's meeting that, uh, to be honest, I haven't had a, a ton of time to spend with Dr. Redmond to go to really work over this plan. I've been kind of buried in Liberty Curtain and I did take a couple of days off last week to, to go away. Uh, so there, the plan needs to, him and I need to sit down and, and kind of get on the same page with it. He, so he understands. I do, one of the directions I had from Dr. Martin was to finish up most of the stuff that was going. Uh, we did uh, finish up the Bucktail locker room. Uh, we, there's just a few things that are left on here. I've also requested from uh, Christy and Joni to, to give me some updated information on the, the dollar amounts. Uh, we, we transfer some of that money over to see exactly where we are so we can start prioritizing these projects. So that's where Dr. Redmond and I kind of will have left it. We're going to sit down. We're going to, you know, exactly what he said. We're going to go over it. We're going to get with Joni. We're going to figure out where the dollar streams are. Put those dollar streams to the most uh, crucial projects and uh, start to move some of that stuff forward. So, the only question I have, Rob, if we wait another month, will we have enough lead time to get stuff done this summer? I believe with the stuff that we're going to try and do this summer, yes, but I don't think we're going to have a ton of money in res capital reserve to do any kind of major major project. I think we're going to do concrete work. Uh, the, the, the other one that was hanging out over there is what we're going to do with this canopy at the middle school. Um, I was going to ask you about that. I, and I have some, I do have some pictures here. I got back from the architect. Uh, I was, uh, I'll share around here. Uh, I think, I think we, we, we can be all right. I don't think, I think the bottom line is there's not a ton of money uh, to do a lot of pro different projects there. We have uh, a couple small things that we're going to do, and I and I uh, a couple of them are safety issues, uh, one of them being uh, the bucktail backstop. That one may come up a, a little sooner. I may, but that, that one's a, within a dollar amount that, uh, you know, I can have some stuff back to the board pretty quick on that. <clears throat> Concrete work. Um, there's not a, uh, not, not a lot of other stuff in there that we're not going to have a ton of money to do a bunch of stuff this year until, unless Joni uh, tells me something different. But I think, you know, because we started the Liberty, Liberty Curtain Project, some of the soft cost money come out of this early on. Uh, it, you know, what projects we're going to move forward this year, we're really going to have to evaluate that and figure out where we're, well, where we're going to fund needed. stuff, what's priority, yeah. some of the stand on it. I know we approved new curtains at the auditorium at the middle school and in Buckville. Were they done. completed? That's done, yeah. Mm -hmm. I Like I said, there's only, and I went over with uh, Wanda this morning, there's only a, a few a few items that are hanging out in the capital plan that uh, that where it says in progress that that are really not completed wow. yet. The, play, the playground fence is uh, there at Woodward, which is soon, they, they can start that soon. Uh, but that's a grant funded thing. Uh, we have some door replacement, which is also grant funded. Uh, Bucktail locker room is done. We also, uh, everything but uh, some stuff below the ceiling inside the rooms. Uh, it's down to I think we have twelve thousand dollars out on that yet of work to, to remain. Uh, some of that's being done by our own people, and some of it's uh, <clears throat> being done by uh, by the contractor. But very, very little stuff that needs to get finished up. We're kind of at a good transition point that I can bring Dr. Redmond up to up to speed on some of it, and uh, he's asked, asked for some different charts uh, that we're going to try and show where the progress is a little differently. 
um, and try and help the board and, and you know, better transparency, I guess, if you want to call it. Uh, because I know where the projects are and I know where they're, how close they are, but you guys don't always know when they're completed and that sort of thing. So we're, we're working towards some of those pieces, but that's kind of where we're at with the 10 year plan. So it's, there'll be more, more to come in the next, uh, month or so. Thank you. Thank you. Real excited about this. Thank you. Um, one thing that we've never talked about though, really deeply is looking at the 10 year facility plan and how do we lower the expense and what I mean by that is something that I touched on maybe two years ago maybe this is pre-COVID um, something that how many square feet of asphalt we have on our property and we lay it here's just one example uh, we lay it and then it sort of sits there and then it starts cracking and then it gets really really bad and then we have to re-asphalt but we don't have any maintenance plan okay a maintenance plan for all the asphalt and that could be anything i'm not saying what it should be but here's an example this might lower the cost of the replacement of asphalt is if there was a maintenance plan for all of the asphalt and we possibly partnered with a municipality or the county or somebody if they have the equipment to patch it or to seal it the cracks or anything i'm just saying this is just one example um and also like this canopy, um, again, I'm going back to naming rights, having someone sponsor the canopy or a portion of it and their name or logo could also be on the canopy. I'm just saying we, we're not delving there. We're always looking at how much it costs and that we're finally talking about grants, which is so exciting, so exciting. But I'm just saying little things like that. Um, it may be a good thing or it may not work out, but at least maybe at that point we can discuss those things. That's it. I think that, uh, I mean, it's point well taken. I, and I know that the pavement is one of those things that we, we have to track as far as, because it's, it's a, a big liability, it's out there. Um, one of the things that we're doing within uh, my department is we're trying to get more of this data put into our uh, work order system, it's FMX. And one of the pieces that's in there is it allows you to uh, put in there uh, and I'll use a, a rooftop unit as an example. It allows you to put in there when it was installed, expected what the life. cost what was, what the cost of replacement is, and yep. what the life expectancy is. Yep. Uh, so my my goal is that I can uh, get to the get to the point where I can bring bring to the board or bring to the my my finance meetings or whatever that hey I have this much stuff that's in FMX that we assets that we've tracked to living and, and we know that you know in 2027 mm -hmm. we need you know four million dollars to replace this stuff because it's coming to end of life uh so we're trying to get some of that data in but once again it's it's a cumbersome process as wanda will attest uh we're, we're trying to get it down to even as far as uh portable equipment, a, a backpack leaf blower, you know, it has a life of 15 years and at some point it has to be replaced, but we have to be able to capture that cost. Uh, so just out of curiosity, Rob, I'm sorry, um, not that this is appropriate right now, but maybe, maybe uh, if you so wish, I'll bring it up at a different committee meeting or something, an, an intern or something like that to help with this data. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that before with a CTC student or a college student or or maybe that's something that you're completely not interested in no, because no, it's I, so. I actually had that conversation with Joni, and it's something where we we are looking at and uh, try and figure out how we can get this data in quicker because I think it's valuable data. Very that, valuable that you guys can use for everybody. And you know, the the pavement's a perfect example because we can put the pavement in as you know as an asset or. The pavement is no different than a rooftop unit in, yep. in some way. So we put it in, we, we say when it was put down, we we put the life expectancy in, and we also put the year that we feel that it's going to need to be replaced. And that'll it'll it'll bring that data out. But we're not there yet. We're we're working okay. towards well, it. Well, we and, I support it 100 percent So let us know, okay? Support it 100 percent Thank All you. Right. Anything else on that 10-year plan or anything? pretty much covered everything unless there's something else. I do want to bring up that I'm going to be doing some 
uh, and Butch, you may be able, you may know a little more information on on this. There's a high wall at the 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 gym at Bucktail. Uh, it appears to be um, it's leaning it's leaning back. Uh, the brick. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some exploratory work. We're gonna have to scaffold it. We're gonna have to go up there. We're gonna have to start taking a section of it down uh, to find out what's going on. Do you ever recall doing any work on that that gym wall? If you're standing at the football field looking in at the gym above the, I guess it's the boys' locker room. You ever remember them doing anything in there with that? It looks like it's a different color, but I think water is getting behind it. It has frozen and moved. It. You're talking the east and end above where they put the new locker room, yeah. the boys' locker room. No, the only thing they did there put that locker room on. Yeah, when when you and if you get down there, if you look, you go over and look at it. You can even see in the precast, it's it's tipped back. I did have uh, the gentleman from PA Masonry uh, go up and look at it, and he feels that I'm on the right track. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to start taking some of it down to, to where it's tipped back and broke uh, so that we don't lose that wall. So I'm going to. How um, tall is that wall? 40? 40 feet probably. Oh, okay. So well, thank I, you for catching. I think it. we're going to be, uh, I think we're going to have to take three to five feet of it down where it's tipped back. And find out what's what's going on behind it. Why is that it's above getting, the roof line? Yeah, it's it's right up at the top. There's a parapet of about a foot and a half, and then at the roof, there's a high roof up there, and then it comes down. I'm going to say 25 feet to the locker room, and then another 15 mm. foot of the locker room. But if it shifted, it shifted. It shifted. Uh, Harlan called it out. Uh, Good we're going to have to address it. Uh, so I'm going to start doing some of that. Uh, exploratory work i can't even tell you what it's going to cost yet because we don't really know what's wrong but we know that it appears to me that water's got behind it and froze it and moved it uh don't know why uh don't know when it happened i we, we really discovered it this this year because we did our roof inspections and saw that uh, some of the a lot of the the mortars coming out of the brick and uh, it was laying on the roof so we started looking at it a little deeper and uh, you know, definitely have an issue there. So I'll be working on that. And after the meeting, if anyone wants to look, I do have some uh, initial drawings that Crabtree gave back on uh, some canopy design stuff at the middle school. Can you email those out? Uh, I mean, yeah, I can. I, I didn't. No, don't, don't worry about know. it today. I'm just I saying. Don't know so if, everyone can see it. We can scan it for all the time. Well, well, I have, yeah, I have it right. as a PDF so on my computer. I didn't know at this that point. Thank you. If, uh, how how much of the stuff you wanted out because they're all kind of the same. They, we just asked for them to come back with some kind of a basic design, and yeah, uh, keep the kids dry and safe. Yeah, that's all we need. If this is the line that you guys are looking at, then I can have them uh, give me some more formal stuff and then try and get some price on what it would cost to to do that. But I do want to get that canopy addressed over there because of the way it's constructed and uh, have a safety issue. All right, if uh, there are no other items for discussion, move that we adjourn, adjourn the meeting. And then finance is at 3.30? Three. Three. Oh, fudge, okay. All right, so we have a few minutes before the next one. Thank you.